Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am Paul Hieronymus. I'm the vice chair of the Ohio Distance Learning Association, and I'm thrilled to be bringing you our professional development session of today, which is going to be featuring Zoom. And we've got a great presenter with us here today, and I'm thrilled to be introducing uh, Kathy Wallace to you here shortly. So I have a couple quick things about the Ohio Distance Learning Association. We are a, uh, the official chapter, Ohio chapter of USDOA. And that brings us to uh, organizations across the state of Ohio, museums, school districts, consortiums, all are here in one big happy virtual family where we're able to be sharing content with each other. Um, so if you are joining us or seeing this on video for the first time and would love to be a part of our organization, you can do so for free. We offer an associate membership level where you are able to be able to join and be a member of our free member listserv where you'll be able to receive content from all of our partners as well as opportunities. So at the bottom of our page, we have a little link here that's a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash Ohio DOA dash member. Also wanna share with you the uh, power of our partnership with the Management Council. Uh, over the summer, a great project was started off and head off that the Management Council read and the Ohio Distance Learning Association helped select the, uh, the software that we're using today, which is Zoom. And what, through this came a great opportunity for you as a member of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. Through your ITC, you can purchase Zoom Pro for $10 a year. That gives you large ca uh, conferencing capabilities, pooled recording storage, all you can handle, the ability of connecting to your traditional H323 devices, and of course, Zoom support. You also have a discount of Zoom rooms at 250 from the original $500 price that's out there. So contact your ITC for those pieces. You'll learn more about the, the power of a professional development of a Sorry, a Zoom Pro here shortly in Kathy's presentation. So with that, that's a great segue for me to introduce you to Kathy Wallace from Zoom. Well, thank you, Paul. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, introduction. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, today, what I'm going to do is go through the Zoom for K-12 schools and districts presentation so we can think about ways where Zoom can be a integral part of teaching and learning within the um, Ohio system. So let me go ahead and share my screen and put us into presentation mode. And let me just go ahead and swap displays here. So is everyone seeing my presentation uh, without the slides? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's think about Zoom in a collaborative classroom. So what we want to do is we want to expand that traditional classroom with video communication to meet the growing needs of today's students. So Zoom offers this through our product suite. And we can see that Zoom, as we think about video communication, is a unified communication platform. So beyond what you think of Zoom in joining a meeting, we also have webinars, we provide chat, there is a Zoom phone system, there's Zoom audio, and then of course, Zoom meetings. So this specifically fits into education in the following ways, <clears throat> pardon me. So we can think about Zoom for teaching and learning, the classroom to classroom collaboration, guest speakers and virtual field trips, recording of classroom sessions. We can think about district-wide staff meetings. We can talk about Zoom in the district itself um, for interviews. Think about morning announcements via Zoom. And then unfortunately, we do have to also think about emergency preparedness and notifications. And then we could go into virtual engagement where we have uh, virtual tutoring and office hours, being able to connect with parents and for, uh, for conferences, be able to have student teacher conferences, as well as student to student collaboration, and then into professional development, much like we're doing today, staff training, teacher work groups, 
You can talk about student to student collaboration as well as teacher observation. So let's go into a little bit of detail for Zoom in the classroom. So talking about improving student outcomes, uh, we, we talked about virtual field trips. Imagine being able to take your students around the world without them ever having to leave their seats. We can bring in uh, people to talk about um, if we wanted to go on a field trip to Italy, we might want to bring in pictures of um, Rome on our virtual backgrounds, then be able to take those students directly into um, uh, cathedrals, the Colosseum, anything that we wanted to see through a virtual field trip simply by using Zoom. And then bring in guest lecturers from those real world professionals. If we were speaking about cells, if we wanted to talk about biology, we could bring in a biologist or getting back to Rome, we could talk about European history and actually maybe bringing in a curator. We can reach out to um, all of these folks that could enhance this virtual learning concept for our students. And not only do we need to bring in professionals from real world experiences, but being able to collect, connect with other classrooms to allow um, students to get beyond their district, to get outside of Ohio, but also move into different states within the US or other countries as well, for them to connect on a peer-to-peer -peer basis with collaborative learning about other cultures and how them as a 10 year old student, a 17 year old student could be connecting with someone of that age group, that peer group, but yet within an entirely different world to open up to students. Continuing on the student outcomes, um, talking about foreign languages, taking Spanish, taking German, taking Russian, um, as a foreign language within their own curriculum, but to connect to someone who actually has German or Russian uh, or Spanish as their first language, being able to have that peer-to-peer -peer connection. I also brought up uh, uh, um, American Sign Language. If American Sign Language was a, a language that our students were, were learning, to be able to actually see an interpreter firsthand uh, going through those um, uh, sign language um, uh, uh, classes to be able to see that firsthand. With our high school students to be able to provide um, a career day, to be able to actually maybe move into a breakout room where we have guest uh, attendees from different organizations. We could bring in uh, Dell, for example, if someone wanted to talk about being able to be a systems engineer or a technician or to bring in our local fire department, being able to actually uh, connect students with a speaker who can speak to them about careers. And then I know from way back when we used to have pen pals when I was in school and we'd write our notes and we'd put them in envelopes and we'd lick the envelopes, put the stamp on and send it off and then every day wait for that response to come Imagine being able to meet face to face with a pen pal to be able to actually ask them questions in real time and get those same answers to be able to have them hold their camera up to look out the window of their school into their schoolyard. So there's so many wonderful things that Zoom can do to improve this experience of learning with your students. Then we have no student left behind. Um, when I was when I was sick back in the day, I would have to wait for one of my classmates to bring home my assignments, bring home my books, and I would actually lose out of um, that actual interaction for that day, trying to pick up on my own. Now we can actually invite students into the classroom via their device so they don't miss a minute of that day's um, experiences and learning. And then if that same student was um, falling behind because they were not quite keeping up, they weren't grasping the topics we were talking about, I could actually hold tutoring sessions with those students. I could open up office hours. I could bring all of my students to, to my office hours and, and work with them one-on-one -on -one 
or in groups to make sure that they were actually getting all of the help that I could provide to them as a, as a faculty member. And I know that as faculty members, you've got day jobs, you've got night jobs, you've got 24 hour a day jobs. So being able to connect with parents isn't always easy because they're fighting the same time restraints that you are. So you could actually set up parent teacher conferences virtually so they could be in the comfort of their own home as well as you being at home or actually in the classroom, but to be able to have that valuable time with a parent to, to, to discuss their, their uh, students, their grades, their, their activities, um, and, and how they're interacting to be able to, to give parents that feedback in a, um, uh, an environment where everyone's comfortable and being able to interact. And what about you as a faculty member? Sometimes you get sick too. Um, being able to uh, continue with the day's classes instead of pushing back the lessons and finding a substitute and then having to reinitiate all of this teaching and learning with your students when you return back to class. You don't have to miss a beat. You can teach from home and have everyone join through Zoom so your lesson plans can be provided during a virtual environment a virtual environment to your students. So some of the features that Zoom, I'd like to point out, particularly for teaching and learning, um, is just one very simple that I did today, is uploading the Ohio DLA's logo and having that as my virtual background. Now these virtual backgrounds can also switch to um, I showed earlier that I am actually located in St. Louis. So I had a nice picture of the riverfront and the arch, but this is a nice way to segue into any learning experience with your students. And you can actually have several going back to our virtual field trip to Rome. Imagine if I uh, had the, the, the boot uh, as my initial map slide, getting everyone excited that we're going to drill down, we're going to go to Rome, we're going to visit some cathedrals, and having uh, pictures as a, a virtual environment as I'm kind of setting the, the tone for the class that day. Now, Zoom itself is so easy to learn and uh, use and um, interact with. I think that both of you on the call today have had experience with Zoom, but for those of you that are going to be watching this recording, I want to introduce you to how simply um, it is to interact with Zoom as a product and then interact with your participants. So on this screen, we're seeing that um, on a Zoom meeting, very simply, we have our audio and our video um, uh, carrots here where I'm able to, from this up carrot, from this microphone, I'm able to test my speakers. I'm able to switch microphones and the same with video. And this is where I would select my virtual background. So while I'm in a meeting, I actually have the opportunity to switch cameras and virtual backgrounds as well as microphones. Always end our Zoom meetings in the lower right hand corner. You'll also see some other things that we're going to interact with here in the Zoom toolbar. And then first I want to talk about viewing options. So right now we're looking at a speaker view. So if you're um, hosting your class and you want everyone to pay attention to you, you can just have the speaker view. But if I wanted to see all of my students, I wanted to have the ability to see if they were interacting with me or someone else in the class, I have the opportunity to bring up what we call our gallery view. And Zoom will provide 49 participants in a gallery view. So through um, nonverbal feedback, I would be able to see that my students are interacting. I could see if anyone wanted to raise their hand, if they were nodding. And you want your um, uh, virtual classroom to have the same experience as a brick and mortar classroom. So I want to be able to see those students and to interact with them. Another thing that I'm able to do with Zoom, much like I'm doing here, is sharing my PowerPoint presentation. So Zoom gives you the ability to easily share with others in the meeting without having to previously upload slides so many times. Back in the day, I would be in a meeting and I hadn't uploaded my PowerPoint. And then there's that scramble mode. 
Zoom makes it so easy to allow both hosts and participants to share their screen. And when I speak of sharing, I can share my entire desktop. I can share a, an application. I could share a document. I could share a whiteboard that we can all annotate upon. And if I am going to allow my participants to share, I have the ability to stop that share so things don't get um, maybe out of hand. And so many times there's great resources available to us that I may want to share a YouTube video, but um, I've seen way too many times that you can't necessarily hear what's going on with the video. Zoom makes that so easy to just select both, <clears throat> pardon me, share computer sound, as well as optimize for full screen video clip. So simply by selecting these two, when I share my YouTube video or any other video that's available to me for uh, sharing within this topic, the, video, the audio will come through just fine um, and, and there won't be any uh, loss or uh, the video is not syncing with the audio. When I'm finished with my third party vi uh, video, I would just simply deselect these and then be back in my optimized view with Zoom. Zoom also allows for me to share just a portion of my screen. So if I wanted to share just a couple of cells from an Excel spreadsheet, I could select that and share. I can also just share my computer sound. So if we're going to Rome for my virtual field trip, I might wanna also have uh, some beautiful arias playing in the background to get everyone in uh, the mood for their uh, uh, Italian experience. And imagine if I was a biology instructor and I was, uh, we were doing everybody's favorite of frog dissection for the day, I would be able to actually share video from a third party camera so I could have that camera actually sh uh, uh, sharing the, the actual dissection with my students both in the classroom and online. Now we can also annotate. Um, and if you guys wanna pick up your annotation tool right now, this is a great screen to do it. I can um, annotate with, a, with text boxes. I can pull up a spotlight that would actually um, highlight my, my text on the screen. Spotlight also advances slides for uh, us going through a presentation. I can clear these uh, for myself or individuals. And I can save the whiteboard because so many times there's great ideas uh, that are shared via a whiteboard and I'm certainly able to share those and uh, be, able to, uh, be able to save those to share at a later time. You'll also notice here that in this um, annotation of a arrow, which is also another spotlight type view to point out where we are, it will list the name of the person that's actually doing the annotation. So I know with maybe some of our younger participants, um, things could get a little crazy. So um, this is again, not done without uh, uh, consequences if you're uh, acting inappropriately, or if I wanna give someone kudos for a job well done, I know exactly who's annotating on my screen. All right, <clears throat> so Zoom also allows for recording as we're talking about to uh, record the sessions if you want to share them out. We have the ability to record both locally and onto this computer. Now, as Paul mentioned, there is a great deal of recording space that's available to all of the uh, folks within the management council. So I highly recommend the, um, the act of recording. This, these um, videos are great to, to share. They're for posterity. They're great teaching resources for students. When you record, you have the ability to record with an audio transcript. So that transcript is searchable, which is another great teaching tool to be able to go into that transcript and just search on particular words or um, uh, sentences. And that for a student would be able to go right back in and find that in the transcript and on the video themselves. Now, the only caveat to mention is we talked about pro, license, pro licenses and basic licenses. A pro license allows for cloud recording and there is no limit on recording time. 
So a pro license would give you the ability to record an entire class. A basic license would limit you to 40 minutes of recording time um, when there are more than two people in the meeting. And you can also only record locally, so no cloud recording. That would then have to be um, converted into an MP4 file and then you would have to share that out yourself. <clears throat> so there is definite advantage to the pro license when it comes to recording. Now to manage participants, we saw that Tom has um, interacted with the participant window before. You have the ability to mute everyone. We were all muted as we came into the meeting today. Uh, we can unmute ourselves and then we can be muted again. So uh, there is a, a way to keep everyone uh, quiet, hopefully during, during, during courses by, uh, by muting everyone, but giving them the opportunity to speak as well. I can also chat with my attendees in my meeting. I can ask someone to start their video if they don't have their video on. Zoom will not be able to actually control the camera and start the video like I can with a microphone. I can make uh, people host and co-host within my meeting. I can rename a student that maybe came in with an, uh, uh, something that we really can't interact with. We can't say, Cody, um, you know, we can rename a student. I could actually put a student on hold if there was a reason for them to maybe take a little time out or I could remove a student from, from my classes if, uh, if that was necessary. Now, some of the other tools that I think are really key to an interactive session, uh, teaching and learning session, is Zoom polling. So polling allows for the creation of questions, be, uh, single choice or multiple choice. You would uh, be able to provide the poll to students as the host, you would be able to see the progress of the poll and set a time limit for those. And then you could also share those polling results. So polls can be done prior to um, the meeting starting. So if you wanted to ask some specific questions to the content of your um, syllabus for that day, or if you are looking at the um, gallery view that we looked at previously and saw that maybe there were some students that weren't 100% paying attention, you would be able to throw a poll mid-meeting to uh, just make sure that everyone is, is paying attention. You can also get those poll results uh, returned to you. Attend a tool within Zoom that is a um, uh, an attentiveness tracker. So if that's turned on within your profile, this would allow you as the host to be able to see when someone's not maybe paying attention in the Zoom window. If the attention has gone off the Zoom window for 30 seconds, that will throw up a little clock on the participants list and will also be shown in the participants list. It will actually provide back a percentage of attentiveness. So I think that that's a nice way to, to make sure that no students falling behind. If we see that their uh, grades might be slipping, it's a nice way to go back and actually see if they are uh, paying attention. They could definitely be taking notes, um, but they could also be chatting on Facebook. So need to keep that in mind. Now, polling the, is a great feature, but that also is uh, for our Zoom, like our pro licenses only. Video breakout rooms, Zoom, I think this is great for education as well. You can create up to 50 breakout rooms. Um, and we've just now, you can automatically or manually add people to those rooms. And our latest release, or the release in September, um, actually provided for you the ability to predetermine the attendees within a breakout room. So if students are meeting on a project or for an entire semester, you can set that up ahead of time and always have those folks in the same meeting with you. In addition to breakout rooms, we have waiting rooms. So those waiting rooms are um, something, again, for office hours. If you wanna set up office hours with students, you can have your waiting room uh, enabled where you can actually even customize your waiting room and then bring your students in one at a time 
or if you wanted to do a group project, if several students are coming for assistance with math, you could bring them in all at the same time. So these are a few of the things that I think are key points to um, think about when you are thinking about is using Zoom virtually for teaching and learning. And I wanted to definitely point out the differences between a basic license and a Zoom Pro license. So with the agreement with the Management Council and Paul pointing out that there has been um, a really great price point for Pro, I wanted to make sure to point out all of the um, additional features that you will get with a Pro license. Specifically, the meeting duration, if your classes go longer than 40 minutes, you'll definitely want to consider a Pro license. If you want to use things like scheduling privileges, having the ability for someone else to assist you setting up meetings, if you want to use polling, um, you know, any of the larger features that are available um, with um, the, the added large meetings, maybe you want to do a webinar or something like that, um, those are all uh, pro licenses as well. So any questions on the pro versus basic license or the few features that I did point out or maybe uh, some teaching and learning use cases? Well, I had a question. Um, thank you, it's great information. Always good to, um, I always learn something like Paul said. Uh, the question is though, when you're in uh, speaker view and or gallery view, as the host, am I controlling that or everybody has that choice on their client, correct? So like I like said it for speaker, because I'm watching you in speaker view, I can switch to gallery view. Is that true for, is there anything that would lock people into just seeing speaker view? There is not. Um, Yes, your participants have the opportunity to switch those views up um, within their, their, uh, the screen itself as, as you're being able to do that uh, now with the, with the views that we're showing. Erin, is there anything else? I know Paul is there with, with Erin. There is no way that we can determine that, is there? Um, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. That's probably not ideal for a classroom environment because we definitely want two-way interaction between students and teachers. There you go. Thank you. I'm good at putting people on the spot. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and considering Aaron and I just met, met today, that was a double whammy for him. <laughs> Kathy, any questions from you or anything to, that we can talk about? No question. Very informative. Thank you very much for sharing. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Kathy, I have a question for you in regards to the uh, breakout rooms. When we're recording a session and oh. you're, doing, you're putting your students in the breakout room, is there any recording functionality of that or is the chat recorded between students who are in a breakout room? There is, at present time, Paul, there is no recording in the individual breakout rooms that can be set by the host, but you can assign recording privileges uh, on that participant window that I brought up earlier. We saw allow record. That would give someone within the breakout room themselves the ability to record those actual breakout sessions. So we can assign um, that to uh, participants within the breakout room, and then they would be able to record locally and then share that recording back out. And then I have one more question about the recording. So if you are the host and you're recording, so for example, uh, for this meeting, I am the actual host and I believe uh, my view is gallery view, but I wanted to switch it to another format. Would that then change the recording or is that just gonna be a set piece each time? The, there are recording options in the web portal of Zoom. There are three separate sections for setting defaults within Zoom. That's meeting, recording, and telephone. And if we select the recording tab, that will show us the different available recording uh, profiles, if you will. 
And when you select any of those, there are a default of three, I believe. One is an audio, one is the speaker view, and I'm not quite sure of the third one, but you have the ability to select those. And each one of those will return back to you an individually recorded file. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I, I have another question. Um, sure. and I use uh, Zoom through when I click on the link, it launches into a web browser. Um, and yet I also have downloaded the, I guess what I would call the client. Mm -hmm. You see as a presenter um, at an advantage one over the other. Uh, they seem to work similarly, uh, but is there something that there's some special, wow, you really should be doing this if you're going to be presenting? We do programming. We are the virtual field trip that you're talking about. So ah, I love it. Cleveland Clinic does programming where we're bringing uh, doctors and other clinicians into schools. But is there any advantage to me as the presenter in that virtual field trip to use the client over the web browser? Not that I'm aware of, Tom. Um, I we at Zoom use our our desktop, our client, continually. That's how I join most of my meetings is, is through the desktop. I can certainly look into that to see if there are any pros of using one over the other. I don't believe so, but I'll definitely look into that for you. Thanks. There, there are a few limitations to note from using the web client because it does leverage WebRTC. Um, we've designed it though so that uh, the reason the web client's there is if you have participants that you need to invite that maybe do not have the ability to install things on their computer, it's a good fallback option, but definitely as the host, if you're able to, you'll always want to use the Zoom client for the most feature-rich experience. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, thank you, Erin. Yeah, and there there are a few uh, differences, you know, not many, but that's a great use case too. Is is that for the folks? I always say uh, maybe for commencement, we think about using the the web browser for grandma and grandpa that don't want to necessarily download that that zoom uh, app they they would be able to just do that from their from their browser okay thanks thank you anything else i can show well kathy i want to thank you very much for uh for your presentation today and uh I think we all learned something new as, as, as well. And for anyone who is watching this or new to Zoom, uh, catching this on video, we hope that you find this to be a great resource as well. And uh, I'll be able to come back and see how to become a member of Ohio DOA and how to take advantage of Zoom Pro for that $10 price. That's a great price. I remember paying over $100 for my <laughs> the last in the near future, the near past. So. This is a great opportunity for everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, with that, we'll stop our recording. Thank you. Thanks, all.